Hey everybody, welcome to A Stable Life. Now this video is gonna be a little different than the normal feeding video, but that's because I have something extra special planned for you guys today. I've noticed that a lot of you have been asking or requesting I'm gonna be with my dad as he's shoeing or working as a farrier on one of our horses. And today, that horse is gonna be Spitfire. You all remember my dad, right? Hey everybody. Are you excited? I'm probably more excited than Fire's gonna be. So like I said, this video is gonna be extra special. Might be a little shorter in length, but it's primarily going to be focused on him horseshoeing, primarily working on the hooves of Spitfire. It's a rather cool, wet fall day today. So we're gonna be having rain in and out, uh, showers coming in and out. So if you randomly just start hearing really loud noise in the background, I'm sorry, but with a tin roof, Things get loud when it starts raining. We're at about midday right now, so most of the horses are all out. Some of them are in the run-in sheds that are all throughout the, the pastures. Others, well, they're just out grazing and just enjoying life. So what are you gonna be working on today? Well, we did a trim on fire a couple of days ago and he's been really ouchy on his fronts. So we're gonna put a set of shoes on him. Today, we're gonna do hot chewing. So we'll talk about the benefits of hot chewing versus cold chewing, what the differences are, and uh, you just get to see a little bit of how we do it on the fronts. And for reference, when we say we're shoeing a horse, what does that mean? We're putting on a pair of horseshoes. These are called cake shoes, they're cold, they're already preformed, they've already got the creases and the nail holes and everything in them. This is a size one light, so we're gonna be putting, nailing these onto Fire's front hooves. So we're gonna heat them up temperature and then we're going to sear them onto Fire's front hooves. We actually have to grab Spitfire, which means that he's gonna to have to go in the pasture and find Spitfire. Spitfire, by the way, is right there. Looks like he got him, just gotta bring him in and then we're ready to get started. <laughs> there we are, set of cross ties. So Spitfire is actually one of our horses. He's been with us for a very long time. Spitfire is 24 years old and he is a quarter horse. Him and my dad actually have a pretty special relationship. <laughs> yeah, he hates me. Wait a minute, what do you mean he hates you? <laughs> so it turns out horses actually have preferences as to whether or not they like men or women, if they're right-handed or left-handed, because they have just as much personality as people do. And fire is very partial to the girls. So basically, you're telling me that when you're on him and you're asking him to do a, a left turn, right turn, a walk, jog, lope, he's not as li likely to listen to you as he would a female rider? Fire's good. He'll listen no matter who's on his back. But it's a matter of whether or not he's happy to do it. He's a little bit more stubborn when I'm on his back. But wait a minute. Aren't you the one that bought this horse? <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, you want to you want to tell me what that was you just put on your leg? <laughs> okay, so this is basically just a holder for my rasp and my loop knife that I use for uh, trimming and chewing the horses. It's just easier to grab the equipment when it's on me rather than have to worry about where it's located at on the ground. So this is just a, a hoof rasp. Uh, it's abrasive on the one side, a little smoother on the other side. Uh, we usually use two of them. One is for the hoof. The other one uh, we use when we're putting nails or for kind of filing down some metal because it dulls them out faster. And this is a loop knife. It's designed to uh, uh, trim out around the frog to get the debris that's stuck in between the bars. Now I understand that you guys don't understand all of the terminology that he's going to use. I'm going to do my best to translate for you as best as I can. Uh, he's going to be using all the terminology just because that's how he knows exactly what he's referring to. He knows what he's talking about. I hope I do. <laughs> At least we hope he does. Um, but you're thinking, wait a minute, there's frogs on the bottom of a horse's hoof? I thought frogs are in ponds. I, I understand. We're going to break that down for you as we go through. So right now I'm just checking to see if this is the right size shoe for his hoof. This is a size one and that'll work for his hoof. This is called a whisper forge. I just add some pro. So we have the shoes in the forge. We're going to heat them up to temperature. While those are heating up, we're going to go to the hooves, clean them up, and by that time these should be up to temperature. All right, so let's get all this gunk out of here. Take the loop knife, we'll get all this dirt and debris out of here. Manure. It smells really good. So these are the bars right here. 
that I was referring to. And you can kind of see that they're different in color to the sole. They give added support and flex to the hoof, which as you'll see in a minute, the hoof actually does flex. So this is the frog. We're just cleaning that off a little bit, get all the debris around that cleaned off. Pair away some of the sole. Ah, abscess. Right there's an abscess. That's why he's ouchy. All right, so that's gonna that's going to make a difference then for what we do with this hoof. Kind of looks like it's already blown out. That's good. Okay, so what happens is um, the horse because he was barefoot could be a stone bruise. More than likely, that's what it was. Yeah. He gets a pocket of uh, fluid, pus, builds up on the bottom of the hoof. It starts right above the sole, and it's just like having a rock in your shoe. It creates a lot of pressure, a lot of pain for the horse. Fortunately, this already blew out, so the pressure's already gone, but he's still a little tender on it. And I'm just looking to see if there's any more abscess, uh, if there's any more fluid build up, or any more pockets that are inside the sole, and it looks like that's the only one. So the uh, tool we just used there is called a hoof tester, and it looks for uh, pressure points from where the abscess may develop, or if there are other abscesses inside the hoof. You just squeeze the hoof, and if there's any pressure there, he'll tell you immediately if it's there or not. And there's still a little bit of pressure there. The pocket is gone, but he's very sensitive. So here I'm just gonna pare away the debris from the sole, get some of the dead tissue off of here. And this is a lot like taking the calluses off the palm of your hand. It doesn't hurt the horse. You just don't wanna cut too deep because you'll get into live tissue. And then we'll just pare away some of the debris on the frog. And yes, that's this V-shaped piece I'm working on. It's kind of rubbery and it, uh, it's a sensitive piece for the horse. It tells him what kind of ground he's working on if he needs to step harder or later get off the rest of that and then we're gonna balance it make sure that it's even toe and heel across the whole bottom of the hoof round off some of the edges get some of the flares off and then now uh, once we get that flat we're gonna sight it down the uh, leg and make sure that it's got a perfect T look to it So this is my rounding hammer. I use this to shape uh, the shoes. Um, one side is a slightly curved, as opposed to the other side is completely flat. Generally, I use this side when I'm doing the alterations. You would only use this if you're just trying to turn um, heel or if you're trying to add any kind of uh, heel clocks, volume to the shoe. Now I got a genuine question here. Anything that we showed in this video, did any of it cause any pain to the horse? No pain to the horse at all. Uh, hot shoeing does not cause any pain done correctly. Uh, anything, it probably hurts me more. I burnt my thumb. chunk out right there. There's a piece. That's a hard move.
This is a sole knife and it is used for hollowing out a little area on the hoof to clench the nails. called Durasol. It is used for relief of uh, sole soreness. It's also a way to effectively kill thrush and white line disease and it provides a level of protection on the horse's sole to prevent any kind of abscesses developing in the future. That's the process for getting one hoof down. It took us 20 minutes to do that one and fire is being extremely good. Some treats. So you mean to tell me that you can drive a nail into a horse's hoof and cause it no pain? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's just like when you have a fingernail. So when your fingernail is extremely long, when your fingernail grows and you're trimming it, that keratin that comes off of that, it's just the same thing as the horn on the hoof wall. You're just trimming off the excess. So, so good. you're working with live tissue. When you've got the sole of the hoof and then you have the horn on the outside, you have roughly an eighth of an inch, depending on the breed of the horse, where you can drive the nail through dead tissue. If you nail too much to the inside, you're hitting live tissue. That can cause severe pain to the horse. It can cause an abscess and it can make the horse go lame. So it's very important to know how much you have to work with and where the nail is going once you drive it through, which is why the nails are shaped the way they are. So how do you know how much you have to work with? Is it different? on each horse? It's different on every horse. You can tell when you trim the sole off and you trim the horn, the outside of the hoof wall off, you can see what's called the white line. And in the video, you'll see it. That from the white line out tells you how much you have the nail in. So if you hit inside that white line, pain. Outside that white line, don't feel anything. Does the nail come out the other side of the hoof when you hammer it through? Yes, it does. And those nails are almost razor sharp. So when you drive that nail through, you have to pull the nail over and wring it off as fast as you can. Otherwise, you can get seriously hurt. Has that ever happened to you? It has, it has happened to me. And one of the videos on the Veggie Boys, I explained that I was wearing a leather wrist brace. It's not doing me a lot of good because I'm not wearing it today. But at one time when I first started chewing, I drove four nails through and I didn't wring them off. And the horse decided he didn't want his leg up anymore and he yanked his hoof right through my legs and my wrist my wrist was on the back side of the hoof and all four nails sliced across my wrist. Fortunately, no stitches, but that could have been really bad. Why are you wearing chaps? I feel everything. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I'm wearing chaps, obviously, you have the horse's hoof right here. Uh, if you have nails through it, or if you're working obviously with a knife, you wanna protect your legs. And the chaps are an abrasive suede material. It allows for better grip and it protects your legs. It also allows you to get your tools easier. Do you wanna to explain to me why one would hot shoe a horse over just taking a pair of shoes and putting them on? Cold shoeing. Uh, big difference between the two. When you're cold shoeing, you're just basically you're using a cold shoe to nail on. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using a cold shoe when you're shoeing a horse, but what it does to the hoof makes a difference. When you're cold shoeing, you're changing absolutely nothing as far as blood circulation and bacterial growth. When you're hot shoeing though, you're eliminating all that bacteria in the white line, you're preventing disease from forming, and you're increasing blood circulation. What people don't realize is that when you get a burn, it increases blood circulation to that area to heal. So when you apply a hot shoe to the horse's hoof and you sear it on, it increases blood circulation, it opens up the vessels, allows the horse to actually function better. So that big bundle of nerves inside the horse's hoof is called the venous plexus. And that is basically the shock absorber for the horse. The more blood you have in that area, the better the horse will be able to run, jump, perform any kind of exercise that you're doing. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed the video. My dad was super nice and allowed me to film him going through all of that and was actually rather helpful with explaining all that information, not only to me, but also to you guys. I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions, probably things we didn't cover. So feel free to ask and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And we'll include farrier tips in the videos as we proceed. Just maybe a brief 
thing to watch out for when your farrier comes to shoot your horse uh, because knowledge is power. So guys, that's gonna be the end to our video today. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like and subscribe for more content because there's definitely more content coming. And let us know uh, how you like this video. Do you want more content of him working on horses? <laughs> <laughs> Bye everybody, we'll see you guys. Until next time.